All right, guys, so I'm putting together another video here, and I've got a bunch of them. So each video's got, you know, things I like about it, don't like about it. I mean, and we're talking stuff from two years ago or longer, so it just kind of really depends. So what I'm going to do on this video here, I kind of held it. I made a mistake, and I kind of was like, yeah, sure, I wanted to show it, but screw it. Let's do it. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, so we got us a zero zone, reaching cooler. I was told it was a freezer. That was freezing up, but it's a cooler. So it looks like they shut it off because it was supposedly freezing product and breaking it. So I believe they turned it off. I haven't been outside to check yet. They've got thermostat down there. Well, they got it turned up to 60, so maybe that's why. Just giving it a brief look over. Got a TXV here, got a screen. Actually has a port to check our superheat. It's fairly newer, some of it. It's like a 2015. Like I said, that thermostat is turned up because they probably were trying to thaw it out. It does not appear to be running, so. For a moment, I don't feel anything going on, so I'm gonna say it's probably turned off. I'm gonna go outside and see what's going on out there. I would say it's this one here. I'm getting very little information on why, what, when. All these things kill you when it comes time to find problems and people don't have good information. So, we got two other coolers over here and one over there. We just flipped it on. It just came on. Like I said, the disconnect was off. Coils are a little dirty. Actually, more dirty than what you probably think. Definitely ain't great. That's no surprise. That looks like a makeshift pop-off device of some sort. I'm kind of amazed by all these. I don't know how they're illegal, how they're actually legal to have, honestly. They're so worried about venting the refrigerant and they're allowing them a way to vent it. You would think they'd let them blow the compressor up if it was so dangerous for the environment. Actually, it looks like it's pretty solid. That's a good thing. Rotation switch. Come back cold. So I'm wondering, does it pump down and shut off? Do we have a problem with our pressure switch maybe not working correctly? Just allowing it to run. Solenoid ink shutting off, I don't know. The problem with this here, when you don't really have a good way to know what was going on, is you've kind of got to go through and just start double checking everything. I mean, it's such a waste of time because you don't get a good description of what's going on. It grows up. I mean, first of all, I was told it was a cool or a freezer. That's wrong. And I'm told it's froze up, but they've already thawed it out. They really are doing a disservice to themselves by not giving you a good, accurate description of what's going on. And that's not our people's fault. It's the owner not getting the information to the service person. So now it's time to be a detective and go through here and see if we can figure out what exactly caused it to do it. I mean, we got our usual maintenance items, dirty coil, possibly low on charge, hard to tell yet. The cooler's not down to temperature and uh, the TXV is probably adjusting. So first thing I did when I got here was I made sure all the fans were running. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what uh, the thermostat's turning on and off at. Ooh, look at that variance. There it's tight. A minute ago it was totally opposite of that. See the variances on that. I'm gonna go outside and make sure that shuts off. It looks like it is because I can hear it stop the flow. So we're gonna go and just make sure it's shutting off. Okay, we're just gonna be generic and do it from in here. Let's see what we got. You hear it flowing, it's coming up. Not pumping down very quickly. Not sure what the refrigerant is yet either. Uh, looks like 
404 valve. Check that pressure switch. Of course, even if the pressure switch isn't shutting it off, the solenoid valve stopping the flow. Not sure what's going on with that. I'm going to take a look. There's 50. I'm set it at 50 and see what it does. All right, so I got a part that's running. Checking my temperatures pressures out here for my shut off. Also took the cover off, checking the contactor out, making sure everything's good to go, checking all the wire connections, looking at the capacitors, looking for burnt wires. Like I said, we're looking at that coil. You know, we may have multiple issues here, so we're going through and just trying to eliminate things like that. You know, that's a, a rub out just waiting for a place to happen. You know, just stupid stuff like this that you just gotta look at it and just start finding all the other stuff that's uh, likely going out next. So even if it's not the one particular thing, all they know is, hey, uh, you were just out here and it's having uh, problems again. It may not be the uh, same issue, but it might be another and they expect you to find everything the first trip. So wait for it to see if it hits 50, which I don't think it's gonna take much longer, it should where it shuts off at. Most likely what I'm figuring we got going on is we've got a uh, thermostat that's bad. But when you've got all these other things, you just want to make sure you check everything. Okay, so we're at 48. Should be able to rock it just a little bit and it should shut off. I can't find the defrost clock either. Somebody's got that hidden somewhere. Turn off about 60. Degrees off area. I'm gonna let this thing pump down. I think the TXV is not adjusted very well either. It doesn't seem like it's feeding very good. Just looking at the, the pipes. But once again, that's like digging yourself into a whole new hole. Things just never quit. If you just changing a bunch of stuff. All right. So let's see if this thing shuts off out here. Definitely not pumping down very quickly. One of our solenoids not closing. Wilbur, I think we might have the issue. Shut off earlier. Nothing's happening. So I'm gonna go in there and make sure I didn't somehow not uh, turn it off. Let's see what we got. If not, then solenoid, solenoid valve sticking, which I've not had before. Could be our issue. It shouldn't be pumping down. Definitely cranked all the way up. I feel like it's doing anything. Kind of just asking for that to get into the fan blade. Wire tie that up here in a little bit. I'm trying to, yeah, I bet my clock is down here somewhere. So we get that off of there. She should be pumping down, but I'm not seeing her pumping down. So we've got a solenoid acting up here. That's kind of weird. Definitely a little weird. Feel the heat coming through the filter dryer. It just loops over there and back again. So yeah, it's quite interesting. Appears to me we just got a bad solenoid. Come back on for another go around, aren't you? Got a Sporlin valve here, three eighths. It's good for up to 3.2 tons, which I know that's no three ton unit. It's not quite the exact type of mounting system. This uses a screw down coil. We tend to use those more often because they're more secure. We're gonna go ahead and use this one, and it should set on top there fine. The only thing I don't like about this one here, it's brass directly, no nice copper in between. I gotta use the uh, High silver content brace alloy can remove at least you can rebuild these unlike the cheaper ones that have just the copper stub we'll go ahead and get this in there all right so we got it in there 
went ahead and chopped the other piece off right there. Ended up uh, cleaning it up with my brass wheel here. Ended up using the stay sill paste along with the high silver contents, 40-45% area. So then we just cleaned it up a little bit, make it look pretty, and uh, should be good to go. Everything uh, looks like it's sealed right. Went ahead and double checked all of our joints there, and everything looked good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get her back together, pull a quick back on it, and. Uh, Make sure it's not leaking. Just so you new guys know what's inside here. This piece here that goes down in the actual valve right here. You got the needle, which is this piece right here. It's got some holes and stuff in it like that. Then you get your seal, which is that metal ring. And up in here, there should be a spring in there. And there's a plate in there for it. So then the electric magnet solenoid sucks that thing up. We're gonna put a little bit of nylon around the uh, threads a little bit. We're gonna throw a magnet on that to pull that up so we can pull through it. You may actually just pull inside here because there's no other valves anywhere else to pull on it. Outside, all those valves are on the system, not on the uh, evaporator side. That's something that's a little different with the way uh, refrigeration works versus air conditioning. I will mention too that there is a little bleed port right there and I originally put that in the wrong way. That goes in there like that right there. So that way it don't mislead you. There's a lot of people pick up on these sort of things and actually play it back and look for little errors that they might make. And so you guys know up front, I am not perfect, believe it or not. So anyhow, it's like that. We'll torque that down a little bit and uh, get busy with the vacuum. I'll take this moment too to mention here's a couple of the tips I use. This is the captain hook. It's got its goods and bads. Um, you gotta have the pressures perfect. If you bump it, sometimes she'll go out and you'll have backfire on it. This one right here is probably the most reliable if you're wanting to do two tips. This is a Harris, I believe. And uh, not really sure the number on it anymore, but that one does an exceptionally good job. It just isn't a real big wide opening. I think that's my number one. I don't ever use that. And then this is my one of my uh, rosebud tips, which does a real good job. Um, all this stuff <laughs> sets inside my little bag here, which is a little husky bag. And that's where I keep my cap tube cutter. An extra port there for 3 8 along with my little cutter and uh, my flux and my braze rod. Another braze rod is those blue ones there. Those are really nice too. But uh, generally what I'll do is I'll shine that up, dip it in there, then uh, apply it. It usually works really good. And one other tip, you can add water to this and make it as runny as you want because it, it will dry out if you're not using it very often. So don't be afraid to add a little bit of water to it every so often. All right, so this is the old valve. Kind of did a quick check on it. You get rotated in multiple different locations, and eventually you'll get it in there. But I would say it was getting hung up on it. When I backed it out, I don't think I crushed it any. So it's sticking. So I don't think just backing it out, because it doesn't look like I ovaled it when I backed it out, that it caused that. It, uh, not a whole lot to these things. What well, was probably happening for whatever reason, some crap has gotten inside of there and that's why it ended up failing. Okay, we're just gonna pull a quick vacuum, get this thing down into a negative, get the air out of it. We're not going for 500 microns and it's just nearly impossible. Uh, luckily we was able to get our uh, electric off the top. I've made uh, little cheat cheater cords that plug in with a fans app before and that works out pretty good too. So you want to make sure you got your coil pinned of some sort so you don't uh, burn your coil out. I also got a uh, pin for like trailers and stuff for that too. We're going to go ahead and let this thing rip loose here in a second and uh, make sure there's no leaks. So we went ahead and uh, killed the power and went ahead and turned the valves on so we get the pressure up. We're going to go ahead and do a leak check real quick. This works a little bit better than trying to get all the nitrogen out and not cross-contaminate stuff. These are the little things that you're going to learn when you start doing more refrigeration. Okay, so we went ahead and just sprayed down all the fittings that are typical to leak. I do not see anything leaking around my nut or the, uh, any of my fittings there, so they all look good. Might have to tighten that up a little bit yet. 
up there is probably just the air sneaking out from around the stem. That's about 70 pounds of pressure on it, so it should be adequate. So we're gonna get a longer screw. We're gonna put it in there. As you see, works just fine. It's just a little bit deeper. The magnet, for the most part, is all in line with that uh, metal stem. We're gonna make sure this thing pumps down. Right now, that's not energized, so. Once this shuts down, pumps down, we're gonna go ahead and then open it up and then we'll just make sure she runs. Make sure this thing shuts off. Looks like our fan's been coming on at the right temperature, with the right pressure. This should shift off down and shut off and then we'll know we're good on that and then we'll open her back up, make sure she's operating and uh, this should wrap it up unless there's other hidden gems on this. Okay, so it wasn't one to pump down. Since nobody has a clue about anything that's going on around here and nothing is labeled, this walk-in cooler here is also on the circuit. So that's why it was trying to run still. So it's opening and closing like it should now. I'm back to possibly replacing the thermostat now. We're gonna go ahead and replace the thermostat and call it a day. Would have been great to have known. All right, so we got the new thermostat on there. To do that, I have a digital tracker by Ideal, and it's such a wired mess here that I cannot find the breaker. I ended up just taping off the prongs and pulling it out and doing it live because there's just no way to get it in there. So anyhow, she's on, it's running, got everything tucked up. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, double check it hopefully get out of here. As far as the uh, valve here, don't know what to say about that. Uh, I went ahead and labeled it so the cooler's on the walk-in cool, walk cooler. So the next person will know that you're not wasting a lot of time. I wish we could have found the breaker, but that wasn't the case. I wish I could find the defrost clock. I can't find that either. Um, not sure this one has one in here because the other cooler is on there with it, so it's hard to say. I'd say they both are going to probably go into defrost at the same time. It's going to be a timed off defrost. I was able to get a longer screw to fit that. Just put that on top there. It makes full use of that without having to sell them a whole new solenoid. And it's not vibrating or anything, so we're good there. So far everything's running. Let's see whether it cycles off the tip, which I've got another call in this town, so I'm gonna go do that and then I'll stop back later and see how it's doing. Got her set at about 36, 37. We just went through and kind of blew it out with the Milwaukee blower. You can see a light through it. Head pressure's holding pretty good. It's about 85 out here. We're not doing too bad. Side glass is full. I'm gonna go ahead and just call it a day. We've been here for quite a while, so everything's cooling down. We'll see how this goes. We'll stop back later and make sure that it's uh, shutting off where it should. Luckily, uh, I had my valves front seated on my receiver and my compressor, so when I pulled that vacuum on it, I pulled the walking cooler into a vacuum at the same time. So and then when I released it, that was, uh, you know, all clean, fresh Freon from the system coming back in, no air, even though we had that other circuit on the system. So we're good to go there. That's why I like doing that, because if not, it would have came through, would have put nitrogen in it, it could have contaminated the whole system. Just another good reason why, if you can avoid using it on stuff like this, where you've got multiple heads, different things going on, sometimes you're better off. I mean, the system was dry and clean to begin with. We opened it up for a split second to do a repair, put it back together. It isn't like it rained inside of it or anything like that. That's my feeling on it. Some of this stuff is a little hyper inflated as far as some of the crap that we do. Um, I have no problem doing it on a brand new system, spend a long time, do it perfect. But on some of this repair stuff, it's just not uh, logical. It's just not feasible sometimes to do a lot of that. So if you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, give it a thumbs up. Like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one.